because I've got a child as well who's sort of coming up to university age, we had to eat and pay all the bills, but no one could come in because I would work part time. And so um, I just took out a loan to pay for daily living expenses. Um, so, and, and now I just, I feel so pressured because I can't find a way of paying back this loan. And um, my daughter's decided she's going to go to university and I don't know how we're going to manage with that either. And I'm just feeling so stressed out and I haven't told anybody what's going on. Certainly not my husband because I don't want to upset him. Is this the first time really that you have acknowledged that you've been through this by yourself? Yeah. Well, you're not by yourself, that's what we're here for. Um, and I know that when you're doing these things by yourself, it does like like you're on your own, but but you're really not. And there are a lot of organisations out there, both nationally and locally, that will be able to help you, okay? First of all, looking at the financial information that you've given to us, um, on a basic level, what you've got coming in doesn't mean what you've got going out, okay? And I know that that seems very daunting, and that you might feel like there's no end in sight, but there is, okay? It's just about knowing how to tackle the situation. It's about how to, how to ask for the help to the right people. I imagine that you're getting letters after letters after letters from various people. Um, I've got to the stage now where I'm just not opening because I'm just scared yeah. to see how much I know people. Yeah. Do you understand how, how not opening those actually makes it worse? Yeah. Yeah, because when you see what you're dealing with, you know what you're dealing with. I just get so well fighting, I just want to put them to one side. Yeah. yeah. I mean, go back to what you said about your husband. That's obviously an additional stress in itself, looking after somebody who's who's been depressed or you know, that's a stress in itself and you've had to pay away from maintain some sort of normality. With your daughter as well. Yeah. Have you found that quite challenging? I have. Yeah, because he just sits there and doesn't want to talk about anything, he doesn't want to do anything. Um, and he's got no idea really mm. of what the sort of monetary difficulties we're in at the moment. Okay, okay. Well, first things first, um, there are organisations out there that your husband could approach for, for, not for support for his depression. Has he has he spoken to his GP or has he been down that avenue? Yeah, he, he's seen his GP and he's taken antidepressants for that. But uh, he doesn't talk to his GP, he just sits there and the GP's not referred him to anybody. Does he talk to you? No. Okay, so he, he's carrying that around himself. Yeah. Well, that might be something that you would like to approach with your husband over time, that there are various organisations, and that's information that I can collect for you and send to you, and you can have a look at that with your husband or have a look at it yourself and, and decide whether it's something that you do want to approach with him, okay? In terms of your daughter, I mean, obviously you want her to go to university, you want to give her the best start that you possibly can. Obviously, there's fears that are um, associated with that in terms of the costs for you. I mean, there are loans that she can take out. It's, you know, it's a decision that she has to make herself. Yeah. In terms of um, the support that we could give, um, the Civil Service um, Benevolent Fund also has a link with the Insurance Society. Um, right. We could look at helping you with maybe the cost of books or if she was doing a specific degree, I'm not sure what she's going to be studying, but we can look at maybe some of the additional costs that would be attached to, attached to that. So that's something that I hope you'll bear in mind if, if you do come across the situation where she is looking for additional funding for books and things. Yeah, that'd be really useful. Okay, lovely. Um, in terms of the, the debt that you've talked about itself, is it a loan just with one company that you... Um, there's a, a loan, I took out the loan for £5,000 and um, also um, we've got higher we're paying for the car, the car. as well. Okay. Yeah. And is that car an essential item? Do you use that? Yeah. Okay. So that's where we live. There's no bus service. Okay. So. okay. And it's important then that you that you keep up the, with the, the payments on yeah. yours. Okay. I mean, without the debts, without the without the car, and without the loan that you've taken out, your income is is sufficient for your outgoings. It's just those little bits that are tipping you up at the edge. And one of the things that we do have is um, is how to deal with with your debt problems and it's very easy to use, very self-explanatory, I mean it's not patronising, it's just very useful right. and it looks at how you can um, address those issues directly with the creditors that you ought to. I mean it might well be that, have you, have you contacted them at all and explained your situation? No, I okay. just didn't know what to say okay. to them really. Yes. 
well, I think we see them as the big bad bank and that they just want their money. And, and in some, you know, in some cases that's true. But I think what you'll find is that if you present them with a case where, you know, you present the situation that you're in, it's not, you know, it's not that you just don't want to pay back or anything like that. You're trying as best as you can, but you still need to eat. Your priorities are your, your, your mortgage and your, your bills and those yeah. sorts of things. It's, are they all up to date? Are they in your ears with anything? No, and um, I mean, I might be with council tax. Okay, well that's something we can look at, you know, maybe helping you to clear that so that you have got a fresh start and what you can focus on is, is clearing those, those debts. One of the things that I would recommend is that you either, you can either do it by yourself or you can contact um, an external organisation that will help you to do it. So I can appreciate that it can be quite daunting to, to collect all of that information yourself. But one of the things that I would recommend is that you produce a financial statement and it's very similar to what you've shown us on your income and expenditure. It's just about presenting to, to your bank that you've, what you've got coming in and what you've got going out, okay? And then what you have to do is, is, is write them a letter explaining your situation and asking them for them to, to give you some sort of consideration. It may well be that they'll give you a break um, in, in terms of your repayments. It might be that they'll reduce the monthly repayment so that you're not actually incurring further debts. And I assume that if you're, you're in your overdraft, you're incurring charges. To charge, yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's the other thing that you could do. You could contact your bank and ask them to actually stop those charges um, just in the, in the short term whilst you're getting Will back. Will they do that? If you, if you present a decent enough case, there's no reason why they shouldn't, okay? The other thing that you can do is, I is, um, don't know if you've thought at all about maybe taking a mortgage break or ask, contacting your mortgage provider. Yes, I mean, if you're up to, usually if you're up to date with your mortgage and you're not in arrears and you've got a good um, credit history with your mortgage provider, there would be no reason why, if, because of a period of ill health, that they wouldn't allow you to take a mortgage break, okay? And if you didn't feel able to produce that financial statement by yourself, that's something that we could help you to do as well. And, and the, this book has, has got draft letters and they're, they're very comprehensive and actually have quite a high success rate with those as well. Right. So, okay. Okay. In the meantime, from, from our point of view, there's certainly things that we can do to help you. Okay. Um, in terms of buying you a little bit of time, I appreciate the bills have still got to be paid and often, although you may well get in touch with the banks and write the letters and produce the financial statements, it can be a matter of weeks or months before yeah. they get back in touch with you. Pay what you can, work out what you can pay and inform them that that's what you're doing. Okay? Tell them that what you're paying is what you're going to pay. Okay. As long as you're still paying, you, sh you should be okay. And in the meantime, what we can do is we can look at providing you with some a daily living grant so that you've got enough money for your bills, you've got enough money to get to work, enough money for food and those sorts of things. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, take a lot of stress off me. Excellent. Is there anything else that, that you maybe didn't feel that you could put on the application form that you actually wish you maybe had had mentioned whilst you've got me here? I don't think so, because, um, I mean, I've tried. I've tried to get to increased hours at work, but there's none available. No. There's no overtime available. I have tried to increase my income, but, right. but you feel like you've yeah. maximised. I mean, looking at no jobs, other jobs okay. around to do another part-time job. Okay. But also, you've got to remember that you've got enough stresses and strains at home without having to then be doing two jobs as well. You know, you've got you've got to look after yourself yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. And if there is anything after you, after I've left today, if you do suddenly think of anything, you must get in touch, and it's something that we can certainly address. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Very Thank much. you.